This is a 2006 Toyota RAV4 with a 2.4 liter 2AZ FE engine. In this video we are replacing the alternator which is right here on the front. How do you know that the alternator needs replacing? Well one sure indicator is that the battery light on the dash is on and if you keep driving long enough with the battery light on the car just dies because at that point not only is the alternator dead but the battery has drained completely so you're stuck on the side of the road if you see your battery light come on just pull into safety or get back to safety of the, as quick as you can or else you're going to be stuck somewhere anyway in this video I'm going to give you a few quick tips that make this alternator job go a lot easier you can make this job as hard or as easy as you want and if you follow these tips it's going to be a lot easier the first tip is this coolant reservoir here that has a retaining bolt right under here, 10 millimeter head. Just get this out of the way. So there I've unfastened the coolant reservoir and I've just swung it over the front of the car. The next thing is this motor mount right here. Remove it. To remove the motor mount first I take this floor jack with a block of wood. I position it right under the oil sump and I uh, relieve the weight of the engine off the motor mount. To get the motor mount out, we have a nut right here, another bolt straight down. There's a hidden bolt that comes straight up from underneath. Then you have one support bolt down at the bottom there, another one just like it here, and one more bolt on the side of the wheel well fender. With this motor mount out, I have a much better access to the area of the belt tensioner, which is buried down in there. And I can even remove this support bracket for the motor mount, it gives me better access. And removing the belt is necessary in order to replace the alternators. That's why I'm going to all this trouble, because otherwise on this particular chassis, dealing with the belt and the belt tensioner, it's just a real pain with the motor mount blocking any access. So the cog for the tensioner relief is a 19 millimeter hex. And it's right under the uh, motor mount bracket. And I'm almost tempted to remove this motor mount bracket. Let's not get carried away. And... Uh, yeah, it's 19 millimeters and it's right there and you can get the belt off the alternator and the rest of the job is easy peasy uh, there's nothing to it of course you disconnect the negative battery anytime you work on the alternator that almost goes without saying but there I said it this is my old alternator on the left and this is the new alternator in its box it's a uh, Denso here's a part number I'll include a link in the video description. I always use Denso whenever possible. I mean, the Denso quality is not what it used to be, but it's still better than this, which failed after only two years. And I don't even know what the brand of this is. And here it is in all its glory. It looks like even the brackets are there. They won't have to be moved. Like you have to often move some of these brackets on some of the cheaper alternators. But uh, this came with the brackets already installed. The final tip I'm going to give you is do not attempt to pull the belt over the alternator pulley. It has a ridge, it's ribbed, and it takes far too much tension to get it on and off. What you want to do is position the belt on the alternator pulley then you can see I've got my ratchet here and then you just want to slip it over the smooth water pump pulley you slip it off slip it over the smooth pulley you don't have to overcome any ribs or ridges or anything that's the easy way to do it and again I'm telling you the easy ways that I found if you want to do it the hard way be my guest one more tip, when you are putting this motor mount back where it belongs with all its bolts there, just use the jack to vary the height of the uh, engine so that you can thread these bolts in one by one and get them threaded in without cross-threading. And uh, by varying the height with the floor jack, 
you can do that otherwise it's going to be very tough to get these bolts back in without cross threading any of them okay but you follow the method of just threading them in loosely while varying the height of the engine using the floor jack then they will all thread in and then you can tighten them. it's all back in and nobody will ever know how we did it i've given you some pro tips that are the fruit of my experience i hope you enjoy them they make your next job easier.